good morning uh, thank you monica and uh, mr reddy i think excellent presentation uh, i represent ilfs energy uh, we are uh, a leading uh, renewable energy player more than about 1000 megawatt of uh, wind and solar and biomass assets uh, we are also building uh, 5000 megawatt of solar park out of that about 1000 megawatt park is under commissioning uh, in the state of rajasthan uh, we are also building uh, uh, 200 megawatt of uh, you know solar assets in uh, state of Karnataka, which is basically towards uh, a, a unique uh, innovative model in the market where uh, the customer owns the project and uh, similar to your uh, uh, you know housing finance or the automobile finance he pays back over a period of year uh, like an asset uh, uh, deferred payment of the asset consideration so in coming to the today's topic what uh, uh, is on the utility scale projects on them uh, from the owner's perspective i think many of you know that uh, whenever somebody tries to invest so you look for you know in your own uh, financial terms of equity returns how is the cash flow so but they remain on paper when you do the bidding and win the project unless it is effectively acted upon through an on them uh, you know, effective on them. So the on them, let me address in two forms. One is the traditional on them, what we all see that today, how uh, uh, the market is shaping up. I think definitely over the last three years, we see a lot of uh, analytics, a lot of, uh, you know, SCADA automation happening. Uh, that is towards sustaining that investment which has been done. So the second part, which is uh, uh, the emerging trend in the on them, so no more uh, the own them on its own you know there is also an opportunity in the solar sector today at the same time there is also a threat the threat what i mean is that uh, you know today the, the, the investment in coal and thermal or gas is uh, virtually drying out and there is a lobby which tries to see solar or wind as a, as a threat to the grid instability may be may be true may not be true as on today but definitely it will become a reality as we go along but that's one part of the lobby which is trying to decelerate the investments in the re so there are certain genuine uh, uh, you know issues which they bring up like in the form of firmness of uh, the renewables how do we improve that firmness so there's no longer uh, you know you cannot rely only on on renewable so that's one part of the story the second is that when that happens that means the technology of uh, the storage is also emerging as many of you know that uh, the electric vehicle there will be a revolution in a few years from down the line so once that happens in parallel uh, the the energy storage through uh, you know batteries will be a reality and already it is becoming a reality where uh, you use it for grid management purposes so i personally feel that a uh, couple of years you will see the trend coming into solar and you will see that solar gaining strength so that that whatever the threat is there today or the people projecting it as a disadvantage will work in its favor and you will see the solar plants no longer become a traditional you know as and when sun comes it generates power so it's not that uh, the, that paradigm shift you will see over the next few years where solar will become like a firm power and it will address some of the grid related issues which it is probably it is potentially creating so now that that paradigm shift brings a, a, a tremendous change expectation on the o and m side so coming to the the first part which is basically the traditional o and m which is happening today i think uh, when an uh, owner or an investor uh, decides to invest so he looks at you know how do i get more generation on a daily basis hourly basis how do i get more generation now of course that gets translated into revenue then to your cash flows then to your uh, equity returns all that fine but in a layman's language how do we generate more from a unit of radiation that means every hour or every radiation uh, hour what you get from sun how can i get more out of it so this is one part but there are many uh, you know what you call uh, building blocks to reach that level it's not as simple as we uh, imagine and also as uh, I, I think monica mentioned on the pr pr is something uh, you know it's very 
very difficult for uh, investors to understand. So, some numbers will be there, but is, is PR is a true reflection where one can, uh, you know, drive the performance indirectly, directly. So, there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you call complexities around PR, uh, uh, you know, to prove that it's right, wrong, all that. So, ultimately, I think the investors today, they are looking at a simple parameter where you say that every unit of uh, sun radiation what I have got in terms of 1000 uh, kilowatt hour per, per kilowatt hour per meter square, uh, what is the generation I can get? I think the industry will emerge towards a, a matrix which is easy to understand. So, that is one part. And how do we build this? Build this is through as she mentioned, uh, how do you build that uh, uh, through the design? assurance uh, at the design stage, selecting the right material, right design, right, uh, uh, you know, combination of sizing of systems and then go to the, the voltage drops which are there within the system, how do we minimize that? Then you go to the, at the time of suppliers, how do you choose the suppliers, how do you ensure that those parameters what you intended are meeting? Then you go to the construction, how do you use best practices to build the plant, how do you ensure that what you have designed is in line with what you are constructing now? So, then you go to the operation maintenance. So, that is that the, the what we believe from design to uh, con, uh, supplier to construction, I think one should approach a CTQ approach. So, from the quality uh, uh, perspective where you identify critical to quality parameters, you look at each of those parameters in the chain and make sure uh, they are interlinked, they have been assessed, they are within the uh, you know, window of tolerance and ensure that what you intended is what you have actually built. So, I am not sure in the 16,000 megawatt what uh, India has built, the developers have a consistent approach. So, she mentioned about the, the lab, that lab approach, what mobile lab, where you see that uh, the technology which is going in, it looks, solar looks very simple from outside, but when we go into the depth, there is a lot of uh, nitty gritties and uh, nuances one needs to take care otherwise you are you are bedded with for next 25 years so and uh, some things which are, uh, are done already it is very difficult to undo so now that's that's the total cycle uh, you know attention in terms from design uh, to construction and to one time is most uh, uh, crucial then we look at uh, you know what can we influence you come to the o and m so, obviously, there are lead indicators, lag indicators, what you have. So, one need not, you know, from an O&M operator perspective, he needs to focus on some of the, uh, you know, proactive measures, what he needs to do. The proactive are on a hourly basis, daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. There has to be a rigorous discipline and uh, system that is followed in that O&M. And the, 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 some of the parameters like, you know, how do we ensure that cleaning cycle having derived an optimum cycle? How do we ensure that each panel goes through that cycle, whether it is 10 day cycle, 15 day cycle, 7 day cycle or it could be a daily cycle. So, that could be uh, one uh, parameter one needs to focus. Then you have the quality of water. I think many people do not focus on uh, quality of water. The quality of water has a, a, a direct bearing on the performance of the panel over its lifetime because the, the glass which is used. Uh, on the solar panel has certain uh, coating as well as uh, has certain optical properties. So, the water quality has a significant bearing on its uh, surface in the form of scaling. So, and also there could be some areas where uh, uh, over water logging also creates some fungus. So, these parameters if it is not taken care in terms of water softness that is bound to impact the performance of the plant. Then you have uh, nowadays water itself need not be used. There could be uh, glasses where, uh, you know, it has anti-soiling properties. It could be uh, glasses which have a wider spectrum uh, response. Uh, the the water, uh, water less cleaning could be there or it could be other forms of cleaning. So, now these, these areas one needs to make sure that, you know, while it addresses the performance, it does not affect the uh, reliability of the system over its uh, lifetime. Then you look at uh, the, the, uh, the critical spare availability, preventive maintenance, uptime, auxiliary, auxiliary consumption is another interesting area where we believe that uh, today the plants are built anywhere from 0.5 to 0.8 percent of uh, the energy what it generates is lost in the form of its own self-consumption. 
and also maybe transmission losses. Now, how do we minimize this? Now, more and more discoms are also becoming more, uh, you know, smarter. Earlier, they used to net off with the solar uh, generation, what used to do. Now, they are telling that, no, no, it has to be paid separately. It has to be a commercial tariff or an industrial tariff, whatever you need to pay. That means because the solar tariffs have become, uh, you know, more uh, uh, cheaper. Now, as a result of which, uh, I think there is also another trend which one needs to see where the solar plants will be independent of, uh, you know, drawing power from uh, the grid. So, such a scenario will uh, help in optimizing the cost, optimizing the losses. Other proactive, these are all the routine, uh, you know, uh, measures one needs to take. I think on the proactive initiatives, one needs to look at uh, the preventive health checkup through the diagnostics could be drone based. So, most important is, you know, we are uh, getting equipped with all these uh, tools and techniques. But ultimately, what happens, how do you build those uh, learnings? Suppose you say there are the 15 module breakage, 20 module uh, problem there. Now, how do you translate that contractually? How do you translate, how do you convince your uh, module supplier that it is because of him? So, this dispute resolution is a major uh, challenge which uh, when you go through it. Uh, then you look at, uh, uh, you know, the how do you optimize the cable losses within the plant. Uh, there could be a correction in the tilt or the mismatch in strings is another common area <coughs> where when uh, solar is still modular, but when you say a 100 uh, megawatt plant, you may have maybe 400,000 modules type. So, lacks of those modules, how do you ensure that uh, when they are connected in series, how there are no losses within the string. So, this, uh, this getting, selecting the panels at a current matching as, as close as possible, ensuring that mismatch losses in the plant is much lower. So, today, if you see is about almost 20-25% from the time you, uh, the sun hits the sun and from the time you reach the grid. So, that is the loss. So, the more you, that is a very significant number. So, the more, uh, uh, you know, saving you do in that, that will translate into uh, your revenue earnings and the returns. So, last, uh, I think uh, uh, the OM as a as a discipline, as a business, is transforming. We believe that uh, uh, the the firmness requirement of uh, renewables and solar, in particular, uh, will be you know fast addressed uh, through uh, certain control systems, where you have the energy storage built as a part of the solar plant and uh, the the peak load issues which are there in the uh, supply uh, demand side and uh, the the frequency regulations and the grid instability issues and uh, the short term peaks which you require all these can be easily met by uh, solar uh, using uh, control mechanisms where you apart from doing the forecasting part uh, demand uh, planning part so it it also needs to so the solar will no longer become an island of uh, power generation it interacts with the grid, it interacts with the load and it, uh, it, it responds flexibly. So, that is the, that is the uh, stage uh, where uh, the, the, the solar utility scale, I am sure, will uh, reach that level and uh, uh, that is the uh, great future uh, as an industry and as a technology and I think India has uh, embarked on a right uh, time. All these uh, global, uh, uh, you know, developments are integrating into India. India has an opportunity to implement. Uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you.